Hey guys, what is happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and we are back into our run of the massive alien anthology with Chapter 4 of Nightmare Asylum. When we had left, Magruder, Peterson, and Renus were all overwhelmed by the number of xenomorphs that had now infested the civilian base. Although his body was burning due to the acid blood, Renus was able to make it to relative safety. That was until Spears and his men arrived. The general explained that the civilians were all subjected to his experiments and were all dead by now, before Renus was dragged back into the base to die. We start to get this picture of Spears as a psychopath. He even mentions that he takes pleasure from the pain of others, which is messed up. Things aren't as simple as that though, as General Spears himself admits that he was not born under traditional methods. He was created by a geneticist and was grown separate to a human womb. This, coupled with the genetic abnormalities, created a monster worse than the aliens. Powell is trying to recruit Hicks to destabilize the General's reign and bring the nightmare to an end. He tells Hicks that not only was the General responsible for the deaths of all the civilians, the manner in which they died was cruel and inhumane. Now, Hicks wants to help, but isn't sure that the two of them will be enough to stop him. Powell finally tells him that Spears has already begun loading his alien drones onto the transport vessels, and also lets him know that some of the men were loyal to Powell, and that they wouldn't be alone on this. We return to find Newt and Beulah in their room. Newt tells us that she had woken early and had been watching him sleep. For a moment, she had imagined he was dreaming. Unfortunately, Beulah was an android. His sleep had been pre-programmed. His human functions were there to camouflage his true nature. She questions what it was that she was really watching in front of her. How many hours of study had gone into the soft purr of his breath and the slow rise of non-existent lungs? She tells us that for a time she thought she loved it. She asks, what is happening to me, as she exits the room. Newt then walks straight to the communications room. I love the artwork in this series. The design of the ships matched the tone and style of the movie Aliens perfectly. As she walks towards the security doors, Newt tells us that something kept bringing her back to the little girl. She enters and takes a seat beside the monitors. The tech is surprised to see her back here. He tells her that he doesn't know what she keeps seeing in those transmissions. He lets her know that they have other stuff on disc if she wants before asking if she wants to fool around with him later. Newt says, sure, whatever, and explains that she could understand the little girl's fear, her pain, and she would have said anything to him to get the signal back. Amy was essentially her only link to what she used to be before it all died. We cut back to a transmission of the young Amy and her uncle. He explains that it is getting more difficult to maintain the uplink. Once the creatures destroy the relay station, they will be completely cut off. We see the uncle carrying Amy while telling the cameraman to follow him. He informs us that people had been congregating near the first insurance plaza. They had all heard rumors of a military food dump uh, with fresh water. They get close to the plaza and then stop at the sound of screaming. They look around the corner to see that people are being dragged against their will into the plaza. The armed men are telling the people not to be afraid of her, insisting that they join her. These men are essentially dragging whatever survivors are left in the city into the nests of one of the Earth Queens. One of them tells the woman he has to look at the Queen and see that she loves them all. This is just terrifying, as the helpless woman is being pulled towards the eggs. We then see that she is being held in front of one. We see it slowly opening, as the men tell her that she is only making it harder. They insist that once she joins with her, there is no more pain, only the peace that comes from being with God. One of the facehuggers then leaps onto her, and they ensure her that she only wants to touch her. We then cut to outside the plaza, where Amy and her uncle have been seized by armed men. Amy yells for her uncle, as aliens begin to attack them all from all sides. Her uncle begs his friend Ray to keep her safe and not allow them to take her. Amy runs away, begging for someone to help them. The transmission then cuts off and we see Newt yelling at the screen. Hicks then immediately enters the communications room and begins to fire at all the monitors. He tells everybody to stay put, and tells Newt to get over to him. The technician yells out, what the hell, and Hicks explains that the general was on his way back from the terraforming colony. He tells them that once he is arrived, Powell and himself were going to relieve him of his command. He says that Powell will be handling communications from the observation deck, before asking if he's made himself clear. We can see Hicks leading the prisoners to the cargo area. He informs Newt that Powell has his men inside the loading bay, waiting for the general's transport. He tells her that they have the element of surprise, 
But, and Newt finishes his thought by saying, but Spears will die before he gives up his command. The soldiers loyal to Spears have been rounded up, and we can see one of them saying that this was bullshit. He tells Hicks that the general is going to take care of them when all of this was over, insisting that he is blowing it. Hicks tells him to shut up and keep moving, but we see the officer jumping at one of Powell's men and disarming him, causing a few rounds to hit the glass behind them. He then tells them that he wants what is his, and we can see the alien queen creeping up behind him. We then see her massive tail impale him through the chest as she bursts through her container. Hicks immediately yells at everybody to get out. They are able to exit the room and seal the door, but we can hear the thump on the other side. Hicks tells us that the bitch, along with her children, want out. The queen is able to use her brute strength and razor sharp claws to pierce through the door. We then see the queen descending on them with all of her drones. Hicks yells at Newt to move it before turning back to shoot the xenomorphs that were closing in on them. We return to the general who is heading back to the base. One of his men informs him that he is picking up a strange reading. He tells him that Major Powell was now handling their approach instead of Sergeant Kellner and that the standard access channels have gone dead. He then notifies him that he is picking up an automatic alarm on the central holding facility as there has been a breach. We see the general cocking his pistol. Spears tells him to break off their approach and wait for further instructions. He had essentially been anticipating a mutiny but is surprised to hear it's been instigated by Powell. We can see Major Powell noticing the General's vehicle veering off, as he realizes the General is onto them. Hicks and Newt are sprinting with an alien right behind them. Hicks tells her that they have to get to the docking bay, as Powell is already in position. Newt asks about the others, and he tells her that they would have killed them for the few credits the General had promised. They open the next door in front of them, as Hicks tells Newt that they are spreading across the base, like they did on Hadley's Hope and on Earth. He tells us that you never stop them, you only survive. As it closes, we can see a xenomorph about to escape. Newt is handed an RPG by one of the men, and she aims it straight into the mouth of the alien before pulling the trigger. The door then closes, killing it and the few xenomorphs behind it. Hicks tells Powell that the xenomorphs are inside the base. Powell interrupts him and explains that the general knows and that his transport has now disappeared off the radar. Hicks grabs him and tells him to forget about Spears. He insists that they need to program one of the gravity drive transports for launch and need to leave now. Powell informs him that they will need hours to program a launch. The acid from the dead alien has already begun to corrode through the door. Powell tells his men to use short bursts and to conserve their ammunition. He also tells them to save the last round for themselves. Newt tells us that she had wanted to be brave and pretend that her death would mean something. She tried to remember her family and the love they provided her, but that was so long ago. Hicks is firing his shotgun into the door where the aliens are trying to squeeze through. At that moment, the general's tank bursts right through the walls. The general then orders them all to cease fire or he will burn them where they stand. He shoots a continuous flame to separate the aliens from the mutineers and says that they understand the flame. He looks at the xenomorphs and says that he is their new master. He tells his men to prepare the traitors for execution and then ready the transports for their journey back to Earth. He then says, it's time, as he lights his cigar. We then head to Bueller, who was actually dreaming. He tells us that his creators gave them names, faces, and emotions. He's furious that they didn't tell them what they really were. He says that his conscious memory was like a story with no beginning. One moment there is nothing, and the next he is whole. We see him wake up and rip out his support cords. He then drags himself to the monitors and tells us that everything he had believed in had been taken from him. He wasn't human or anything else, and Newt was all he had left. He tells us that they were going to take her as well as we see him reaching his hands to the monitor. We can see the general saying that his children understand the flame. He goes on to say that there is a purity to the alien that he had found refreshing. There was nothing uncertain about its motives. We can see Newt yelling that he is completely mad, insisting that his men should have killed him long ago. Spears then jumps down and grabs her by the jaw, saying that his men believe and trust him, asking whether she really believed their pathetic treason would succeed. The general orders his men to load the rest of the creatures into the ship's hold and prepare for launch as it was time. He tells us that he can feel the alien's impatience and eagerness to prove their loyalty in combat. Higgs yells out, asking who he wanted to conquer and what was even left to destroy. The general tells him that he had expected more from him, he explains that he is fighting for their future and tells him that the creatures were their salvation. They have consumed man's imperfection 
leaving the Earth cleansed and ready for a new master. He says that his troops were going to reclaim the Earth from their brethren, and together, they were going to create a new world. Hicks then says, I get it, you're friends now, before saying, Christ, you are insane. Spears then orders the three of them to be taken to the breeding center. Hicks yells that he is coming back for him, and we can see Beulah yelling out, Newt, from one of the monitors. And that is the end of chapter four. We will be back with the final chapter of Nightmare Asylum before jumping straight into the next book in the series. Let me know what you guys thought of this chapter in the comments below. Unfortunately, that's all that we have time for. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and to subscribe to stay up to date on all my content. All right, guys, stay awesome. I'm Niat with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.